top stories of the day. Understand the issues that matter. This is Manila Bulletin News on Web. Your quick rundown of top news in the country and around the world. Manila Bulletin, celebrating 120 years of timely stories and timeless truths. Be fully informed. Hi, I'm Barbie Atienza. This is MB Now, and here are your news on web. Typhoon Quinta slightly intensifies as it heads towards the West Philippine Sea after battering southern Luzon, where another low-pressure area was spotted this morning, according to Pagasa. Quinta was last estimated 310 kilometers west of Calapan City, Oriental Mindoro, as of 4 p.m., moving west at 25 kilometers per hour while packing maximum winds of 125 kph and gusts of up to 160 kilometers per hour in the latest weather bulletin of Pagasa. Quinta is forecast to bring moderate to heavy with at times intense rains over Occidental Mindoro, Oriental Mindoro, Northern Palawan, Calabarzon, Aurora, and Isabela and may reach its peak intensity within 24 hours and leave the Philippine area of responsibility on tomorrow morning, according to Pagasa. A lower low pressure area spotted 1,945 kilometers east of southern Luzon may enter the Philippine area of responsibility on Wednesday or Thursday morning, but it is less likely to develop into a tropical depression in the next 48 hours. Tropical cyclone warning signal number one prevails in Batangas and some areas in Occidental Mindoro. The government has mobilized a massive disaster relief aid, including 890.5 million pesos worth of food packs and funds to assist communities affected by Typhoon Quinta. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque said the typhoon hit areas should not worry since the government would provide them with assistance to recover from the latest calamity. He said President Duterte's main concern is the safety and well-being of the people amid the latest storm battering some parts of the country. As Quinta dumped heavy rains in some areas of Luzon and Visayas since Sunday, Roque said the Department of Social Welfare and Development has readied funds and food packs for the families affected by the typhoon. Roque said quick response teams have also been activated to extend assistance to typhoon hit areas. Meantime, the government has reminded local government units to implement health protocols such as safe distancing in the distribution of relief goods as well as in evacuation centers to prevent any spread of the coronavirus disease. The Government Pandemic Task Force will calibrate carefully if more foreign workers and visitors will be allowed to enter the country, according to Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles. In his Facebook session, Nograles said the task force will study factors such as the adequacy of the country's health care capacity if the travel restrictions on foreigners will be further relaxed. Nograles noted that the country's carrying capacity must be looked into considering many Filipinos are expected to return during the Christmas season. He said the government is also looking into whether foreigners from other countries with low to medium coronavirus transmission will be allowed entry. The principle of re reciprocity for countries that allowed Filipino travelers is also being discussed. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Infectious Diseases, or IATF, recently decided to reopen the country's borders initially to foreigners with investors' visas starting November 1 amid efforts to revitalize the economy affected by the coronavirus pandemic. These foreigners who want to enter the country must have valid and existing visa at the time of entry as well as pre-booked accredited quarantine facility. The country's immigration laws will also be applied to the entry of foreigners. Nograles said the IATF decision was reached following the request made by such group of foreigners to enter the country. So lahat po yan, siyempre pinag-aaralan to find out kung kaya nga ba ng ating carrying capacity in anticipation nga of 
this coming uh, Christmas season. That being said, um, hindi ko rin ma-predict or masabi kung paano at kailan ba tayo magpapasok ng anong klaseng category. Alright? So, basically, it's a work in progress. It's something na pinag-aaralan, it's something na tinitingnan ang numero, and ang point dyan is, unti-unti, binubuksan naman natin. No? Hindi lang natin gusto na pabigla-bigla. Thirteen new cardinals were appointed by Pope Francis, including a Filipino archbishop from Capiz. CBCP News said Pope Francis announced the appointment of Capiz Archbishop Jose Advincula during a Sunday Angelus at the Vatican. The new cardinals would be elevated at a consistory on November 28th. Advincula was born March 30, 1952 in Capiz. He was ordained priest in 1976 and in 2001 he was appointed Bishop of San Carlos and as Archbishop of Capiz in 2011. Advincula becomes the Philippines' ninth cardinal following cardinals Orlando Quevedo, Luis Antonio Tagle, Gaudencio Rosales, Jose Sanchez, Ricardo Vidal, Jaime Sin, Julio Rosales, and Rufino Santos. At present, there are only three living Filipino cardinals, namely Quevedo, Tagle, and Rosales. In Metro News, the Votas LGU opened tallest urban vertical farm in Metro Manila and San Juan to build solar-powered bike pit stop and repair station. From more from this report. The Navota City Government opened a four-story urban vertical farm at Navota's Homes 1 Tanza to give residents a sufficient and sustainable food source. The vertical farm on a 500 square meter land is said to be the tallest in Metro Manila. Navota's Congressman John Ray Tianco said vertical farming maximizes the land area as Navota is one of the smallest cities in terms of land area. Good Greens & Company, a vertical farming solution provider, will manage the farm to yield high value and year-round crops through aeroponics a plant cultivation technique where the roots hang suspended in the air while nutrient solution is delivered in the form of a fine mist. They will also teach Boy Scouts to plant, use their technology, and harvests. The farm features four tower greenhouses, the construction of which was financed by the Boy Scout of the Philippines Navotas and Good Greens Company. The country's first solar-powered bike pit stop and repair station in the open parking area is set to install in San Juan City. In a social media post on Sunday, Mayor Francis Zamora shared a glimpse of a biking facility project designed which will be constructed within the city's open space along Pinaglabanan Street. Zamora said the agreement with private partners Alliance PNB Life Insurance Incorporated involves the installation of hundreds of safety bollards in major biking areas within the city to insert safe lanes for bikers. Apart from this, Zamora said the construction of the pit stop includes the building of bike parking areas, bikers resting area along with a small footprint, bike repair station complete with hangar arms, repair tools, and air pump. The city government has earlier launched a modified bike lane along Ortigas Avenue and Domingo and Pinaglabana streets to provide a safe transportation option for residents affected amidst the limited public transport due to the pandemic. Here are the top news in other parts of the country. Lian Batangas mayor dies of COVID-19. More COVID-19 recoveries recorded in BARMM. And vessel catches fire off Cebu City. All crew members rescued. More from this report. Mayor Isagani Balompo of Leon, Batangas, passed away on Saturday evening, October 24, after testing positive for coronavirus disease. He was 68 years old. In a Facebook post on Sunday, October 25, the municipality of Leon said it lost a great leader who never stopped thinking about the welfare of his constituents even in the very last hours of his life. Before serving as mayor, Balompo also worked as Batangas' health officer. As of October 25, the Department of Health in Batangas Province has recorded 9,022 cases including 245 deaths and 7,396 recoveries. 
The crew of a vessel which caught fire near Shell Island in Cebu City have been successfully rescued according to the Philippine Coast Guard on Monday. The crew members of Super Shuttle 3, a vehicle carrier, were rescued after fire engulfed the vessel's engine room at around 3.30 in the morning. The Coast Guard also reported that two injured crew members suffered first to second degree burns. The Philippine Coast Guard declared the vessel fire under control at around 4.30 a.m. and subsequently declared fire out at around 5.05 a.m. The Ministry of Health of Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARMM has recorded 48 new cases of recovery from coronavirus disease as of Sunday night. The region also recorded a single-day highest recovery record with 95 persons healed from the virus last Saturday, October 24. The BARMM now has a cumulative total of 1,190 recovered patients. Acting BARMM Health Minister Dr. Amirel Osman hopes that the high recovery rate would continue. In world news, Biden accuses Trump of giving up on COVID-19 fights. Spain declares virus emergency as global cases soar. And Dubai introduces facial recognition on public transportation. Let's watch this report. U.S. Presidential Donald Trump is giving up in the fight against coronavirus disease. That is the accusation of U.S. Presidential Challenger and Democrat Pat Joe Biden. He also mentioned that the president faced a new outbreak in his team, surging infections nationwide, and an uncomfortable admission by his chief of staff. Nine days before the vote, Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, conceded Sunday that we are not going to control the pandemic, which he said could only be done through vaccines, therapeutics, and other mitigation areas. Biden immediately seized on Meadows' comment as he again hammered the administration over the virus, which has set record for new cases in recent days with nearly 90,000 on Saturday. Trump on Sunday was continuing furious space of campaigning for a second term in the White House with stops in New Hampshire and Maine. Spain declared a national state of emergency Sunday to tackle a second coronavirus wave as the World Health Organization reported the third straight day of record new infections around the world. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez announced a new state of emergency and overnight curfews across the entire country except for the Canary Islands. Spain was the first EU member state to pass the bleak milestone of 1 million cases and has been joined since by northern neighbor France. According to Sanchez, the situation that they are going through is extreme. Dubai is introducing a facial recognition system on public transport to beef up security as the Emirate prepares to host a global expo exhibition according to its official. Dubai, which sees itself as a leading smart city in the Middle East, has ambitions to become a hub for technology and artificial intelligence. Both sectors will be on show when it opens the multi-billion dollar expo fair. Earlier this week, under the watch of Dubai's Crown Prince Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed, the city's police used facial recognition and simulated scenario to identify gunmen launching an attack on the metro station. The six-month event was delayed by one year due to coronavirus and is now set to open in October 2021. In entertainment, 23-year-old Filipina Indian Rabia Mateo from Balasan, Iloilo, was crowned Miss Universe Philippines 2020 during a competition held in Baguio City on Sunday, October 25. Mateo edged out 44 other girls for the prestigious title and will represent the Philippines in the Miss Universe 2020 pageant. She gave a heartfelt answer when asked, where do pageants stand in time of crisis, saying that she wanted to use her strength to make an impact because that is the essence of beauty pageants and that beauty pageants gives them the power to make a difference. Mateo graduated cum laude with a degree in Bachelor of Science in Physical Therapy. She works at the Review Center as Review Coordinator and Lecturer. Meanwhile, Ms. Tagig Sandra Limonon appeared to be dissatisfied with the results of the competition as she shared negative posts on social media implying that someone cheated. Limonon finished in the top 16 of the competition. In sports, the Blackwater player who was reported as a second probable case in a bubble tested negative 
on its confirmatory RT-PCR test at the mega quarantine facility in Kapastarlak. The PBA broke the good news on Monday morning, a day after announcing the second suspect case inside a bubble. The elite cager also tested negative on the antigen test administered at the athlete's village on Sunday. The player will remain under quarantine as a precautionary measure. With this development, the game between TNT and Northport will likely push through as scheduled at 6.45 p.m. on Monday at the smart 5G-powered AUF Sports Arena. Boxer and Ifugao native Carl Hamis Martin is one of the few Pinoy boxers that is starting to make a mark for himself in the world of boxing. In tonight's episode of Sports Chat, get to know the unbeaten bantamweight prospect Carl Hamis Martin as he shares how he started in boxing and talks about some of his recent matches. Catch the latest episode of Sports Chat airing at Manila Bulletin Sports Facebook page and here at the Manila Bulletin Facebook page at 6 p.m. right after MB Now. And those are the news on web today, October 26, 2020. It's just 59 days before Christmas. For more news and details, get your copy of Manila Bulletin newspaper tomorrow or log on to www.mb.com.ph. You may also subscribe to our newsletter through the link on this video's caption to have the day's latest news delivered to your inbox. I'm Barbie Atienza from Manel Bolton, celebrating 120 years of timely stories and timeless truths. Join us again tomorrow. This has been MB Now. Be fully informed.